Let me record to this. Well, welcome to our pink tea tales. Yeah, pink tea with auntie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got the auntie from, actually, she's a retired national now. Her name is Mary. And Auntie Mary, I called her, and she said that when she would start having her um, new consultant orientations, when they did the launches, she would say, I want you to grab this auntie and that auntie and this auntie and that auntie. And that's really where I got the um, uh, having six people come to your new launch. Mm -hmm. That's where that came from. Wow. And so I always called her Auntie Mary also. And mm -hmm. that, that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I like that relationship, the auntie. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an auntie. You gotta have a good auntie. Did you have a good you, auntie? I did. You did? I did. I had great. I had a couple of great That aunties. was the one in, in the apartment out in um in no, San Francisco. Yeah, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Auntie Bond. Auntie she was Bond. My, she was my favorite aunt. Yeah. Yes. And she was a great aunt. She was actually my grandmother's okay. sister because my mother didn't have sisters. But I okay. also had Auntie Molly, who was my mother's first cousin, who was like her sister. So Auntie Molly. Yes. They you were know, the we best. will call somebody else an auntie. Uh -huh. We will call. And let me, something else interesting about aunties is that um, in the African culture, particularly Cameroon, I don't mm -hmm. know about Nigeria or other um, countries, but in the, in the African country of Cameroon, if a person is at least a year older than you, you have to refer to them as auntie. Wow. You have to give them a list. The respect. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter what it is. So mm -hmm. auntie is big for me. Yes, yeah, so I'm auntie Tika. <laughs> Like an auntie, you can tell your auntie different stuff. Yes, she can. Yes, she can. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> that auntie boy, auntie understand. <laughs> Okay, so let's get with it. Okay. Um, I have some questions specifically for Auntie Tika. Okay. <laughs> Let me find them. I've sent them to you, so I know you've already, um, you know, kind of yeah. gotten it together. But first, we're just going to have a couple of icebreakers, okay? okay. And I'm going to ask you some, just a couple of icebreaking questions. Okay, so we want to spill the tea. Yes. All right, silver or gold? Gold. Gold. Okay. Yes. Love or money? <laughs> Love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe her. <laughs> so if you love them enough, money comes. Okay, okay. baby. Okay. That's what we don't say. Okay. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts, for sure. Dunkin'? Mm -hmm. Okay. New York or LA? Ooh, I grew up in LA and I love New York. New mm. York. New York. How does New how does New York edge out LA? What is it? Well, I love the energy in New York. And you were just there. Yeah. I was. And it, I love the energy. I love just, you know, the, just all the people and the yeah. walking around and all the stuff you can do, but it's still by the water. So I never think of New York by the water. It's on the water. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. I always go to the water anywhere I go. So whenever we go to New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the people, Tika, tell me about the people because it's coast to coast, two large cities that right. are famous. But tell me but about the, people the difference. Well, you, I, you think, know. I think New York has changed since 9-11. Okay. The people have gotten a lot nicer. Okay. There's just a lot more communication. Where in LA has always stayed the same and nobody speaks to you in LA. Oh, they don't? They do not. Matter of fact, when my daughter moved there, I said, hey, Kristen, I said, people don't talk to you. I said, so don't, you know, don't, you know, like force yourself on them because she's such a Georgia peach, you know, right. saying hi so, to everybody. Just so y'all know, we're both in Georgia. Right. Okay. So she moves to LA and she calls me up like second night. She's there. Guess what, mom? What? I, I met all my neighbors. I said, how'd you do that? Sure. I went over and knocked on all their doors and introduced myself. <laughs> I was like, LA. Okay. I'm surprised they opened the door. Oh. But she said, but you know what? She said, I, I, I told them all that we were going to meet on Friday night in the courtyard just to, just to get to know each other. And that's what she did. And that's what they did. And they got closer. But normally people don't speak to you. They don't wave. Matter of fact, when I moved to Georgia, my I, um, uh, Lee, who was not my, he wasn't even my boyfriend at the time. He was just showing right. me around Atlanta. And we go through these neighborhoods and people were waving. Yeah. And I was like, who are they waving at? He's like, they're waving at you. Why? <laughs> anyway. The acknowledgement. Yeah. Just the it, acknowledgement. It's big. Mm -hmm. It's big. Isn't that style. something? Okay. And now I wave all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah I'm and I'm Beach. offended if you don't wave right, now. Right. Okay. Um. Okay, here's another question. Delta or Southwest? Delta. All the way. All the way. Y'all, I got to have on-time flights. 
Yeah. I got to be able to pick my seat. I pay a little bit more. Yes. But, but I can, the two I can, guys. but I know, but you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gold, a gold sky club member. Now, okay. So okay. I don't have, I don't pay for bags. I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. So you get bags. Free I get regardless. bags free anyway. So yeah. more than two. Yeah. Anything? There's two, two bags free. Okay. So you're getting Southwest benefits with Delta. That's right. Delta. With Delta on time. On time on time and straight flights pretty much wherever that's I'm right go. yeah no layovers no layover Mm-mm. okay all right y'all <laughs> cc cream or cream to powder Ooh, that's a tough one it really depends on the the event really yes so cc cream is a day every day yeah but if i'm like doing pictures mm-hmm. or something like that then i definitely do cream to powder really? i love it i'm gonna get into the cream to powder okay forever diamonds or cityscape Forever Diamonds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then Miracle Set or Volume Firm? Volume Firm. Really? Yes. I've been using Volume Firm since it came out. And I am in love with this Miracle Set. Oh, this (laughs) new Miracle Set. The Miracle Set is awesome. Oh, my God. I started using it. I'm like, oh, uh, oh, wait a minute. It's running a close second. But it's still Volume Firm. It's still Volume Firm. Volume Firm tingles me. It does. And okay. Yep, yeah. It, it it just is It did for me very in the very beginning, but as I kept using it, it my skin got used to it. Yeah. And the, what it's doing is it's correcting your skin. That's why yeah. it's tingling. And your skin looks good. Thank you. So what do you have on right now? Right now that, I have on. Is that uh, CC cream? No, actually I have on bronze 160. Okay. And so then I foundation. do, I do a concealer under my eyes. I do light bronze. I mix light, light bronze and deep bronze together. Mm. And I'm looking at her straight on and it is just gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, like when I when I had them guessing who you were, I was like, she's a Barbie doll. <laughs> and they were still like, it's either Manina or it's one of you. <laughs> they, they were trying to guess who you were. All right, so let's get to it. What I want to know, what we want to know, our pinkies, is a story when you knew that being your own boss is better than working for someone else. I knew that when I went on my very first vacation after I quit my job. Okay. So when I quit my job, um, and what was the job? Uh, I used to design retirement plans for a living for a large pension company. And Ooh. I used to travel a lot and all that. And after I quit, our first vacation was coming up. And I've been a, I'm a big vacationer. Even yeah. when we were, <laughs> when we had no money, we were going vacation somewhere. Right. Okay. Uh, but um, so my very first, our very first vacation was coming up. And my very first thought was to call Richard to ask for the days off. Oh, and that was, but you weren't even working there. But I wasn't working there anymore, but I had been working since I was 13. So I had always, I always had to call my boss to ask for days off. And when I pick, I literally picked up the phone to call Richard and I thought, I don't have to call Richard. Oh my gosh. I can take a vacation without asking. Oh, we, that's what I mean. Let me, I need some, hold on. I need some pause. I need something else in my mind. Mm, Tika. Yeah, that's what it was. was okay, now why did what why had you quit though? Why had you quit? Well, I had, How quit. had you quit. Well, anyway. when I started Mary Kay, I didn't know that I would like it, but of I course. loved it. Right. And so six months in, probably mm-hmm. about it was probably about five or six months in to doing my parties and everything. I told my husband, I said, I think I want to do this full time. Yeah. And so he said okay, if you want to do it full time, we're going to need to put some money away. So what we decided to do was for those six months, Mm -hmm. we lived off of just his income and I put my income in the bank so that when I quit, I had had a good, right. I had six months of income in the bank Mm -hmm. as my kind of cushion. So that if, if I had a month that was lower than I wanted, then I can always pull from it. If I had a month Mm -hmm. that was bigger than I put back into it. So, so that's what I did. That's how I felt comfortable leaving my job. And were you a director already? No, I was a consultant. Wow. I was a consultant. I don't even think, well, I was, I was a red jacket then I was an ed jacket when I quit right. yes. ed, ed. <laughs> that means ed you jacket. got you got one or two but not quite three, three. three. <laughs> three. <laughs> but you had had three I had three right so you had the r at one point right right I did have the r <laughs> and then I went to the ed right <laughs> so um so yeah I was I was not a director I ended up um becoming wow. a director like a year after that so okay so the foresight to have 
to the foresight to know that as okay, I want this business. I do think I want to do it full time. I know I want to do it full time to quit, to have the nerve and the guts to quit. But then to also know, well, let me let me put six months up. Mm -hmm. But um, my question for you is how what made you un also understand or explain more about knowing that if I needed some from this, what would that have been for expansion for your business? Like, well, it really was would it have it, been for it was just so that I could have a cushion. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't feel comfortable just quitting with no cushion. Right. Business is cyclical. Sure. Every business is cyclical. It right. goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Right. So I wanted to make sure that if I had some weeks that it was down, right. I had money I could pull from. Okay. For you know, for us to sustain where right. we were. Okay. So so what would you how would you suggest a person that's already in Mary Kay, not about to quit, mm -hmm. <clears throat> who still wants to have, you know, their income? What I'm thinking, or what I would like to put into terms of is like how much do you think a person should have for a down sales week? How much should they squirrel away for their Mary Kay? I think Does that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that you should be squirreling away all the time. As, just as a practice. Okay. Just period. Period. Yeah. It's, you know, not spending everything you make mm -hmm. and, and putting money away because there's, you know, the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Listen. Always. Ain't nobody spare. Ain't nobody spare <laughs> from the rain. <laughs> so I've always had a philosophy that I had to put money away, had to put money away so that, you know, if something happened or whatever, mm -hmm. I always had cash that I could draw from. Okay. Um, okay. and when the matter of fact, when for business, just oh, for, for, well, you even know, for business for life, but, right. But even for business, right. um, having, you know, deciding what, you know, you want to invest in your business mm -hmm. and always having that access to it. Access. Got to have access to cash. Okay. I remember this during, remember in 2008 when the market crashed, I do remember this and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, but you know what? Mary Kay stayed very so did. steady during that time. We used to say EAB. Do. Remember the EAB principle? Everybody ain't broke. That's right. Remember that? Everybody ain't broke. Everybody ain't broke. We would go to the Everybody malls and we would see malls packed. Yep. Everybody's still shopping. Something. I mean, something. The market didn't crash for everybody. Okay. Let's put it that way. So. Right. But. I learned a, I, during that time, mm -hmm. I was reminded again of how much cash I needed to have on hand just in case something happened. Okay. So you know, six months, six months, six months, six months. Six months. Add it up. Mm -hmm. Add it up. Add up six months in the bank. And it might take you three years to build up six months in the bank. Right. It might take five years, but mm -hmm. it's a great five year plan to let your Mary Kay. Yes. Fund your emergency fund. Come. Let it fund that your is, emergency phone. Now that's a purpose. Mm -hmm. That is a purpose. Okay. So now let's talk about something else. Another story. Okay. A little known tough time story, a tale, when you learned what you learned from it and how you used it to ultimately, in the end, take your business higher. So a tough time tale. Okay. And what you learned from it and how you were able to take it higher still. So my biggest, my, my toughest time was in the early 2000s when I had built a national area at that time. And I, you know, I, I was probably four first line or three, maybe no, actually two first line away. And um, one of my sales directors passed away. And after that event, it just, several of my directors decided to become beauty consultants again bottom line. And so it was very tough for me because I thought what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And mm -hmm. I, it devastated me. Um, and I literally shifted into neutral, okay. but because I had built such a large area, neutral for, for me was <laughs> like never going below an equinox in my car right. <laughs> because um, you know, many of those um, directors who became beauty consultants, their consultants came it, back into right. my unit. Right. So, so, um, so for me, so it was that just was, a redistribution. It was a redistribution of wealth. Of, right. It was a <laughs> redistribution of wealth that that in is. my business. Mm -hmm. And, um, but what I learned from that 
you know, somebody came, one of, somebody came up to me at seminar that following year. Cause I, well, it was two years later. Mm. I was an elite. elite you were elite. Executive. I was going to say you I were was elite an elite executive with cats and, and everything. Right, I, I, remember. And I had all kinds of great stuff going. And then two seminars later, I came back as a senior consultant director. I mean, senior director, I'm sorry, senior director. And um, someone came up to me and she's like, why haven't you quit? And she was dead serious. And she was at seminar too. too. Came up to me, why haven't you quit? I can't believe you haven't quit. (laughs) There's no reason to quit. I mean, I was, that was a, that was a shocking question for me, but I was like, you know, I haven't quit because I'm not a quitter. Mm. That's why I haven't quit. I came into this business knowing that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It didn't depend on whether business was up or down or whether circumstances changed or whatever. That had nothing to do with me staying in my business, you know? So, so, um, but I did use that. And you haven't forgotten this, this question. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I wonder, has she quit? She has. She has quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you just be, it. I used, mm-hmm. I used my experiences from that, what I could have done better, what I could, I evaluated. I'm really, I'm really good at self-evaluation and kind yeah, of looking at are. things and saying, you know what, what could I have done better? What could I could, what could have done differently? So when I um, decided to get back on the horse and start building a national area again, I, I wasn't afraid. Mm-hmm. I just knew it was time. It's just time to do it. And I'm not looking back. I'm not worrying about it. I'm just doing it. So. And I think that leads me to our next question. A story of an aha moment when you knew you would become a national. You know? <laughs> well, that's it, it's a great question. That I knew I was going to become a national when I decided to become a national. Mm-hmm. I had made you the know, decision knowing well, and deciding right. I, I, I had made the decision that okay. it was going to happen and because of the because of my commitment to that decision I literally changed my my um I asked the Lord what do I need to change what do I need to do and he gave me all of these it just started downloading all of these things that I needed to do and mm-hmm. I just was obedient to what he was saying. And I started doing that. I took classes on coaching. I started wearing lashes every day. I changed my look. I went to, I went to, I remember, I went to, um, I went to a style, a new stylist. Yeah. And I said, what would you do with my hair? If you could do anything. Uh-huh. And she said, split that part down the middle. I said, I can't split the part down the middle. I have gray hair. I'm, my hair grows out gray. She's like, girl, I don't care. You need to split it down the middle. It's going to take 10 years off your, off the way you look. And she was right. And so just my look. And then I remember I was on a call with my um, with my directors one day as we were building. And somebody said, you have literally transformed. Wow. You like look like a national. <laughs> I said, that's because I am one, even though I wasn't one yet. But it just was like my I was just starting to become as I was building I was becoming and I knew it was going to happen I had literally no no doubt doubt, no doubt not even a sliver not even a thought not even a oh my gosh is this going to happen none of that it It was 100% this is happening and I did not it didn't matter who it was the I wasn't concerned about the players right I was just more focused on finishing the game and so that was my thought pattern So the aha moment came, you said that when you knew it, but then when you decide, right. When I decided I had in my mind, I had already played the picture of me going across the stage. Yeah. Then the suit came, you know, the, the suit came out and, the, and, the, and yes. the, that seafoam green is all in yes. my living room. That's my yes, favorite it. color. It it's is. actually my favorite color in the 64, in the 64 crayons. That was my favorite color. Seafoam even, green. Then. even then, even a little girl. So I was like, oh, this is a God wink. <laughs> yeah. And because I played it in my mind so much, when I went on the national trip and we had to come out, you know, for our reception, yeah. remember on the, the pool new, deck, yeah, the new, you know, all, oh, yes. everybody who came out on that. the pool deck the first day. 
when I came out on the pool deck, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is my first time. We're not. You. I was like, I walked out on the deck and I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I played in my mind. I I'm, I can walk up to anybody and say whatever. I was not. You were not. I was not like. No, you were not. You were not starstruck I at wasn't all. starstruck with anybody. You belonged. I belonged. And yeah. you deserved it. Right. So it wasn't, I, yeah. I had no trepidation about that at all. You did not. But I had played in my mind. Yeah hanging out with the nationals mm-hmm. and coming up on the stage and doing my speech. As a matter of fact, right before I came out um, for my speech on the day, Mia, you were, you were, she, Mia came to my uh, debut, which I'm so, so honored to have you there. And um, before I came out, one of the other nationals came up to me and she was like, aren't you nervous? Aren't you nervous? Aren't you nervous? Oh my God. When I had to make my speech, I was so nervous. I'm not nervous. Right. I don't get nervous. First of all, I don't get nervous before okay. I make a speech. I, I speak in front of people all the time. This right. is no different. Mm-hmm. I said, but the reason I'm not nervous is because I've already done this speech a million times in my head. Yeah. I mean, it was already, I'd already done it already. I'd it, already it waited. Would, it, would almost, it would almost be a, a, a failure in faith right. to then be nervous. Right. Wouldn't it be? It would. Yeah. Because I, I already a saw faith myself. failure. Faith failure. That's a good, that's a good point. But yeah, I just, I wasn't nervous. I stepped out and I said my speech like I had been saying it for years because I had been saying Y'all, it Tika years. was on that trip as if, I don't even think people realized that she was a new national because she was just so in tune with everyone. She knew, she knew all the nationals. Right. And so, you know, she, she inserted herself into conversations. It was not a standoff or anything like that. And I, right. and I sat back and observed her. She wasn't trying to be with me all the time. Right. You know, I was like, with dog Tika, are we going to have lunch or breakfast or a snack? You know, <laughs> what are we, we going to do together? <laughs> anyway, it was great. It was yeah, great. It was awesome, you just, awesome, awesome experience. So when you, if, if it's something that you wanted your entire time and, or however long it is, don't get there and act like you won't belong. Right. You belong right there. Mm-hmm. You did exactly what needed to happen for you That's to right. be there. Mm-hmm. So, so be right on there. Not that, not that you're not excited, but not that you're arrogant either, but this one supposed to be, mm-hmm. you know, look, That's right. Act like you didn't have some before. Listen. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here, another question. Okay. So we're going to switch gears. Okay. Working with a difficult leader in your organization. Um, how did that help you? become a better leader um working with a difficult leader basically so story, it yeah, helps you to story. right it helps mm-hmm. you to flex your uh it helps you just to to not flex your muscle but build a muscle mm. okay so um I'm not a very confrontational person no. you know I, I I'm not I'm just that's not my personality but I am really good at asking questions okay and what I did was I I had one one um difficult leader who um, actually had a leader who was, um, she wasn't a Christian and she was offended that we were praying before a meeting or this or that. And she's like, I just have a problem with it because I'm not a Christian and blah, blah, blah. And so I said, um, what is the first word of your title? She said, it's beauty consultant. I said, no, that's not the first word. So we didn't look at your business, look at your business card and tell me what is the first word. And she said, it's independent. Exactly. We are all independent Mm -hmm. beauty consultants or sales directors, which means that we can run our business the way we see fit. Okay. So would you prefer to leave the meeting early Mm -hmm. so that when we're praying, you're out of the room, or would you prefer just to stay and wait until we finish? And so she said, well, I think I'm just going to leave early. I said, perfect. You're an independent beauty consultant. Right. You have the right to control your own business. <laughs> As we do times on our, <laughs> yes, we do. Times on all the recordings. On hold. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I will not be offended at, at all if you decide to pick up your bags and leave a few minutes early every week. I get it. No problem. Mm-hmm. You know, and so what what I have discovered about myself is that when I get into a pinch with someone who maybe maybe is not flowing or whatever, it's just to ask a bunch of questions. Ask questions. Just ask questions. Because usually they'll be able to answer their own situation. Mm-hmm. 
instead of me trying to figure it out and tell them and all that. I'm not a psychologist. I didn't go to school for that. <laughs> so I feel like and just asking questions is the best way to get out of them what is what they're really feeling. Right. And for them, usually they'll figure it out uh, for themselves too. Hmm. So, and that's coaching. Right. And that's coaching. That's also coaching mm-hmm. is question. Right. Que- questions. Coaching, coaching equals questions. Right. Ask the questions. Okay. Right. Leading questions to help them through it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So last question, mm-hmm. complete this sentence. Leadership is. Leadership is is so many things oh my gosh <laughs> but for me leadership it doesn't is, have to be one right answer. right well for me leadership is the willingness to do what god is telling you to do mm. the willingness <laughs> it's the willingness wow. to do what god is telling you to do mm, 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 mm. Because without that, yeah. you're not going to become the leader you're supposed to be if you don't follow his instruction. Because he's going to tell you to do stuff that's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. that's going to stretch you, that's going to make you feel like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I feel like I'm walking at the end of the plank or all of that. But if you don't do those things, you can't become right. who you're supposed to be. So for me, leadership is doing what God is being willing mm-hmm. to do what God is telling you to do and being obedient to it too. You can't be willing and not obedient. Wow. But being willing to do it and doing it. That's, that's, that's very fulfilling to hear. Pray. I mean, you know, our, our senior national Sonia always says pray for willingness, mm-hmm. uh, but I like the way you put it. Mm-hmm. I like the way you put it. I'm glad it's recorded also. Um, but when you mentioned just now, so that wasn't the last question. I do have one more thing. When you said becoming, I, I mean, I, I meant to ask you back when you had the aha moment of becoming a national. Um, there's a process and during that process, you become who, what your goal is. Right. So if a person wants to become a sales director. Right. Um the qualification process builds you into that director. That's correct. right. That's right. Can you, can you expand so, on that? In other words, you become it because you've been doing the work for it. Okay. You know, yeah. you become it because you're doing what it takes to become it. Right. So when you're becoming a sales director by you building a team, by you encouraging your team, mm-hmm. by you doing your sales and meeting more people and doing more interviews and all of that, all of those things make you become a sales director. Right. It's like, but you're doing it by but the you time don't start you're off in, there. Right. You don't start off the there. Qualification process. Right. right. It's the qualification right. process that gets you there. That yeah. that makes you become it. Mm-hmm. So some people are like, oh my gosh, I only have eight people. How am I going to get from eight to twenty four? And how am I going to? Right. It's not about. It's not about the how. Okay. It's about number one, the willingness to get the eight. Okay, let's start. And there. then the willingness to keep working to get eight more right. and then get eight more. Right. So that you can build your unit in faith mm-hmm. that it's going to happen. Mm. What happens with most consultants, once they enter the DIQ portal, they are tr- they're trying to make it happen in their own flesh. Okay. They're trying to grab everybody they can mm-hmm. instead of doing their sales like they're supposed to do. They're trying to recruit everybody, auntie and all of them. Right. That's not what makes the unit. What makes the unit is is building more customers, okay. asking more about the opportunity, mm-hmm. getting new team members, and then those team members also getting team yeah. members. You know, if you include if you if you recruit twenty four auntie and them, you're not going to have a unit. Right, you just have twenty four people. Mm. But when you're building a unit, you want to get people that you don't know. Right, God's going to bring you people that you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. He's going to bring you those people, but you have to be willing to give out your card. You have to be willing to ask for the appointment. You have yeah. to be willing to share the opportunity. And by doing that over and over and over again, once you become the sales director, you're not surprised it happened because you <laughs> did what you were supposed to do. <laughs> and you're not wondering what to do now. Not, not wondering what to do now because you're still doing the same thing that you right. did. Okay. Just getting paid a lot more. <laughs> so there's rich and there's wealthy. Y'all, is it okay if I keep if we keep going? If we just say a couple more things. 
there's rich and there's wealth. Mm -hmm. So I would like for you to expound on, and I know you're not ready for this question, but you are okay. because you're ready for it. So rich is when you sell in Mary Kay and wealth is when you recruit. That's right. the way I look at it. Right. Can you talk more about that? Right. So um, rich is selling, selling the products, mm -hmm. you know, getting that 50% commission. Yeah. That's amazing. You can do it. But wealth is when you're building for your future. Mm. And when you're building a team, you're building for your future because you're building that residual income from your team right. coming on and then building an organization mm -hmm. that you're going to be paid on the rest of your career. So for me, it's uh, team building was something when I, when I was a new consultant and I really caught the bug for team building, um, I just started eating everything I could get my hands on on team building okay I was ordering all these tapes and listening yeah. to them <laughs> listening to them on the way to on the way to work yep. on the way back and then um tapes <laughs> <laughs> it was cassette tapes back then y'all now it's podcast, no, it's podcast <laughs> right you don't even need to it, listen you can just do it by your phone but um and now it's the Mary Kay learning app. yes so you could I was listening to all I was listening to them so much that I had memorized the words mm -hmm. So because I had memorized the words when I was closing, right. I had memorized the words because I had listened to Gloria so much. I listened to Pam Shaw yes. so much. I had memorized the words that they used. Yeah. And so that's what made, built my skill. And so I knew that, yes, I could just sell the products and I could, you know, and be, be happy. Mm -hmm. you know, I could be rich doing selling, just selling the products. But I knew I wanted to make a career out of this. And I knew I wanted to build an organization and gift my lifestyle yes. to others gift my um this amazing the joy culture, yes. the joy the girlfriends the, yes just all of just it's being around business big goodness. thinkers mm -hmm. just all of those things that no other job could have done for me or business mm -hmm. could have done for me other than Mary Say Kay it. so just couldn't do it couldn't do it mm -mm. you couldn't not recruit right I could not recruit if, right especially if I really wanted this to be something that I wanted to full time, impact. especially right going full time. Plus, <laughs> I wanted to have the income. I wanted to be able to replace my executive income from my job. Just right. all of those things. I knew that that was part of what I had to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Women need this business. They absolutely need it. Even if they just did it for a year, I it mean, changes your life. No matter what, everybody needs to do Mary Kay for at least a year because it literally changes your life. I've seen so many women. Mm -hmm whose lives ha are completely different now, yeah. who have a different perspective on mm -hmm. life because they've been around positive That's women right. who are pouring into them, have been around bigger thinkers yeah. and people who want things for themselves and who can who can help you if you've been in a situation, because whatever situation you've been in, seen somebody, Mary Kate, and already <laughs> been there, done that, and got 50 yeah. t-shirts, okay? <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, we've all been through those challenges personally, professionally, there's somebody else who's, who's, who's been in that situation or way worse. That's right. Mm. Who survived and thrived and, and are still thriving. So just being uh, connected with these amazing women has changed my life. Yeah. Truly changed my life. So more than money, I feel oh, like, yeah. I feel like we need a marketing plan that talks about other things that the doesn't other, even talk about benefits. 50%, doesn't right. even talk about, um, you know, I'm gonna come up with it. Don't you? <laughs> That has nothing to, we need a Mrs. Cab that has nothing to do with money or cars or anything, but that has everything to do with who you become right. by being in, immersed in this. Right. And the culture. The fun. Right. The, the fun. events. Right. Just all of the that. The travel. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I am going to stop. This is recorded. Um, it's also in the Pink Tea Group. Okay. Tika. National Tika. Yes. Here's to you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go put some strong okay. in my cup. Tika's, Tika's also a first lady, y'all. So I have to drink for her. Let's say. <laughs> I I, I, I just let me stop. Let me not get ignorant right now. <laughs> this is what I'll do. If I, if I talk too long, too much comes out. <laughs> So I'm going to stop right here. Thank you all for joining us Thank for this you. pink tea. Thank you, Tika. This is so fun. Thank you for yes. inviting me to this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, it was an honor for you to say yes. And for you to be so willing to share what you shared. It was, it was insightful. You were transparent. 
We can hear your heart. We see, we see the God in you and um, we see the strength in you as well. Thank you. Absolutely. It came through. Good. And people needed it. Okay, y'all make it a pink tea day. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. All right.